I'm at NBAA 2024 in Las Vegas in the uh, Garmin G3000 Prime Simulator with Jason Hughes, uh, who's going to give us a once-over of this uh, new avionics platform from Garmin. Jason, completely redesigned from the original G3000 system? Uh, completely redesigned yeah. from the G3000. Yeah, Prime offers touch primarily on every screen. And uh, having to have the interface that is touchable makes things a little bit bigger. So, so G3000 introduces new hardware, uh, both on the primary windows here where you're actually viewing the information. We have brand new uh, hardware down here where we used to have what we call Garmin touch controllers. These are now just secondary display units. They literally are a display unit as you might mount uh, in front of you. So everything uh, architecturally is supported everywhere. Um, but from a human factors interface design perspective, we've kind of crafted it a little bit differently. But G3000 Prime is a is a faster on the back end. It's got that touch capability and um, intuitive user interface that really um, emphasizes the ability to be able to touch things. From a hardware standpoint, I'm looking at uh, big displays here that look like they've got uh, less bezel, more screen. Less bezel, more screen. Edge to edge glass is part of the design. You still have that edge available for bracing, but yes, edge to edge glass gives it a nice aesthetic. Um, it allows us to do some things from a from an edge perspective, bringing things in and off the screen. Um, so we've got some in interesting user inter interface interactions we can utilize that edge for. What is the typical configuration of a three thousand prime? Does it vary by airframe or or what? The configuration for G3000 Prime, you'll see this in uh, primarily this three primary display units with two secondary display units. We have configurations that we're utilizing for the advanced air mobility market um, that utilizes um, a, a different configuration, but uh, this is your primary uh, G3000 Prime installation for the Part 23 market. And uh, flight control autopilot, uh... Still have a control panel up at the top of the glare shield. That's not going to change uh, anytime soon, I think, in this category of airplane. Correct. Yeah. So we'll we'll continue to use our in the same same GMCs that we've always utilized. They are available here as well in in Prime. Um, so that's all the same. The GIAs are fundamentally the same. So that's our uh, integrated avionics. Those kind of the the brains of the system are still the same. In fact, the core software is the same. We've just had to put a different front end on it to allow the user to interface it with their, with their, with the finger, right? With touch. Yeah. And one thing that jumps right out at me is uh, the emergency auto land uh, switch. Mm -hmm. Big announcement here at the show uh, this year was uh, from Textron uh, in the CJ4, uh, Gen 3, which includes emergency auto land. Pretty major part of this 3000 prime or? Uh, you know, the emergency auto land feature um, architecturally has been with us for a long time. So it's a major feature. Uh, it's just a core feature of Garmin at this point. Our emergency auto land works with Prime as it would with G1000 and G3000 today. Yeah, now there's also another feature that's called emergency return. Emergency return, not related to the auto land feature. So it's not gonna do anything automated except get yourself set up for an approach. So one of the things that might happen on takeoff could be, let's just say smoke in the cockpit and you wanna get back on the ground quickly. Emergency return allows you to get the procedure and the V-speeds, all the things that you want to get situated quickly, done on the ground before you take off. You don't want to be making these kind of decisions when a lot of things are going on, when there's hectic cockpit. So when we're quiet, we're still here on the ground, we'll go kind of methodically through the emergency return uh, app here and talk about what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Should we go to, to we continue here at the local airport or do we go someplace nearby? In this case, maybe we'd want to go to uh, uh, Caldwell. Um, and, and so that allows us to get that set up so that when something happens, one button press, I get my V-speed sent to my PFD uh, for landing, and I get that procedure loaded, uh, and I'm really ready just to communicate and navigate and just aviate, and then it's just simple. Keeps things simple. Okay. Yeah, so the user interface has been updated for touch. So, and what we really wanted to do is you know, minimize that information architecture. In 3000 today, as you'll, you you can see, you can you would go home and you would kind of deep dive down into the, the structure of the applications to find the app that you want and then place that app either on the main screens or actually utilize it on the current G3000. With Prime, most of those applications are located within the screen that you want to work with. So we're looking here at that multifunction display. We have a map. If we wanted to see the dedicated TCAS traffic map, it's just one button press away. So you have that quick access to all the apps 
that are makes sense to be viewed on the primary uh, multifunction window. In addition, like systems, right? So rather than having to go to a touch controller, dig, deep dive down into a systems page, I can just touch our touchable EIS indication, the engine indication strip, and get that systems page to show right up. And or even an environmental page can just kind of pop right out of the side here. So I don't, I have less buttons to press in general because I have more touchscreen real estate. I can actually find things quicker. Yeah. Is the font brighter, uh, more bold? We uh, went to a higher. Looks like it. It's it's we have you know it's a higher contrast system in general, so we we want to make sure things are easy to review in all lighting conditions. Uh, the screens have are you know have a, a nice robust solution for touch for the oils on your skin and to keep them from being um, you know prone to that glare that sun might provide on. So we really kind of tweaked all the uh, the hardware to make sure it's uh, it's very viewable in all lighting conditions. So uh, before we move away from the hardware, uh, another component that looks different to me are these boxes down here. What do they do? Yeah, so these Garmin control units will allow you to interface with the system, the main screens here and here, with this device. So when touch is not convenient, you have the ability to still utilize the system fully. It's, some would consider it like you're, you're a digital finger. I can actually touch these screens and then manipulate them without actually having to touch them. To use the system, you're using the same uh, focus control that you did in G3000. So that's the same we've always had. You, you pain and you pan, I'm sorry, you use the pain focus and move that pain around. Then you can interact with that particular, uh, well, the map, for example. I can actually push this in and start moving the map around, right? So that is all within the zoom control. I can, I press the zoom in just like G3000 has always done. That hasn't changed and I'll snap back to my own ship. So once again, I can move the map and the whole map is moving, um, and then pressing it again will snap me back to the own ship. The next button you'll see is the split full button. The split full button has an icon that looks just like that button. That's also split full. So I can touch either one of these and split the screen. So pressing it again will make it full and split just as you could if you do it direct touch. Once again, it's that digital finger. So that's all in this kind of window focused and window control. Moving over to the center portion, this is really where we're starting to control the application itself. So right now we're looking at the map. I can bring up the maps menu and maybe put in um, maybe put in the VSD. So utilizing this knob and just pressing in, uh, I can bring up the VSD. Pressing the back button is the very same button as that. So once again, like the digital finger, I can press back. So I can bring maps in, I can change settings, bring the terrain settings up and press back and close that menu out. The next button is the apps. You'll see that matches that button. So I can actually open up the application drawer, spin it over to another application, maybe charts, and I have the ability to, you know, just like I did in, in the G3000, kind of move this knob to move the chart around. Okay, so another um, feature that we brought to Prime is part of our terminal safety solutions is the, uh, the ROA, the Runway Occupancy Awareness System. Uh, that system utilizes the ADSB uh, traffic coming in. Uh, it looks at where you are in the air, airport, and it tries and it does it determines if there a conflict. So, is there going to be an air, aircraft landing on a crossing runway? Is there an aircraft landing on an opposing runway? Um, and then we will we will then alert you with the appropriate alerts using visual cues on the flight deck, and uh, and help the pilots know that hey, there's somebody coming in. You know, we always come to the end of the runway. What would we do? We look to the right. Is there anybody out there? Right. So now we can look to the right and glance at the screen and say, is there anybody out there? I, you know, you still need to visually do all your visual checks. This is an assistant. This isn't going to see necessarily everything, right? This is ADSB. So if they're not transmitting, we won't necessarily see that. But yeah, we'll we'll be able to quickly alert if if, uh, if an individual is is progressing and maybe not making radio calls, or uh, the tower's busy, right? It happens sometimes, and mm -hmm. uh, and people get slipped through the cracks. So so Roa is 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 uh, present on the screen and on the system, and I think it's uh, it's going to help a lot of a lot of a lot of folks stay out of trouble. Any way to retrofit a Prime into a Legacy 3000? Right now, it's a forward fit solution. So we're, we're really focusing, we've got our blinders on, we've got our uh, pencils down, and we're really cranking out the forward fit solution. Um, so we'll, we'll see in the future what, what the future brings. Jason, thank you. You bet, thank you. You could read a full report on the Garmin G3000 Prime in a December 2024 issue of Aviation Consumer Magazine. 
For Aviation Consumer and AvWeb, I'm Larry Anglisano. Thanks for watching.